Someone named I Hypocrite did an interview with Mr. Girl a couple weeks ago. I know it usually takes me a month before news reaches me that something interesting has happened, so I'm early on this one. Almost early enough to be relevant. I'd love us to watch this whole thing together and discuss as we go, but the interview is roughly six months long, so I'll have to respond to only the best and worst of it. We're going to be discussing cuties and pedophilia. If you want to watch Mr. Girl's honest review of cuties first, you'll have to find his website, because Big Brother YouTube took it down. You'll have to settle for my review instead. Mine's better anyway, because it includes me doing a night rush with the hunts. Anyway, here we go. And I do say later on that I think it's exploitative and should not have been made with children. But the first thing I said was, I think it is more sane, sure, if you want to qualify it, it is more sane to argue that this film exploits children than it is to argue that this is a secret psyop thing to try to lower the age of consent. Disagreement number one. I do not feel that the movie is exploitative of children. You would need to walk me through that one. I haven't done my research, but I don't think the actresses were slaves. So what does exploitative mean? Are we claiming the filmmakers, producers got more out of the interaction with the actresses than the other way around? It's possible, but that's par for the course in capitalism. Are we saying that having people masturbate to you is somehow a special kind of cost that the girls are paying and it can never be compensated for in any other way because sex is a special kind of evil? That sounds like what most people are thinking when they say that kind of thing. The counter argument being, get the cross out of your ass, sex is part of life. The movie is trying to make you have this uncomfortable experience of looking at these girls and being like, huh, that's weird. I didn't, well, oh, oh ew. it's supposed to be a jarring, uncomfortable experience. And so that is what this video is about. It's about like you hit a bullseye. You're, you're trying to prove to uh, the director, I think, in, in a kind of like man, uh, not hating, but rage um, against misogyny is trying to prove that people can be made to sexualize children if they're presented in a certain way. We can sexualize children if they're presented in a certain way. Some will also sexualize children regardless of how they're presented. More importantly, perhaps most importantly of all, children will sexualize themselves. That's the point I've been trying to make for years. They don't need some sinister older figure to corrupt them. A term to which I would of course object. They're already human. And yes, it's man-hating, for a couple reasons. First, this idea that attraction is wrong by some objective standard written in the stars somewhere that I've never seen. But second, because there's this demonstrably false assumption that only men are attracted to minors. Men aren't alone here. But we don't fear or hate female sexuality, so nobody cares. Sure, but I think that most people, or I, like, I can, I'm not going to speak for other people. I'm just going to speak for myself, okay? Thank you. I appreciate that. Okay. I can't relate when you say that. Yeah, this yeah, you're normal. You're a smart, normal guy. I get it. Max, that's, I, that's I what, watched. That's what. Listen, that's what every YouTube I know, channel. I know is, you're gonna, I know this makes you really angry when people, it does. When people are like, yeah, I can't relate it, to getting turned on by ten year old girls, and then you're no, it's like, a, I can't oh, relate to school Mr. shooters. Virtue like, what, like, make a list. Mr. Normal, everybody, congratulations! But you make people what else can say you not that. To? You're can forcing you to, me to you, say that by the fact you, that you're sitting no, there saying, I, "Hey, I, I am turned on by no, this." No, I'm not forced. No one is forcing you. Well, to okay, make you're a declaration. Not forcing me literally, no, but it's no, a, money is forcing you. You're doing that for you're doing it for money. You're doing what? it for money and no, social stuff. No, 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 no. Those are the things that are forcing you no, to do no, that. No, 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 no. This is you nothing want to, to see... do with money. Of course it is. Okay, if I said like, man, uh, when I see somebody with like a huge diamond necklace, like I, it makes me want to like spend all my money on like a diamond. Like that, that may be something you don't relate to, but you would feel no need to declare that. You'd, you'd, you'd probably be more willing to do a hypothetical experiment where you're like, well, yeah, why, why do people do that? Why do people spend their life savings on jewelry? It would be something you could explore, but this, this idea is too scary. And I don't even think it's too scary for you. Cause I think you're, I think you're an intelligent person. I think, you know, that sexual attraction does not uh, turn on and off like a light switch when you turn 20 or 19 and then somebody, you know, is 17 years and 300, 
or 64 days old, right? Like you, you, you're, you're not an idiot, but uh, people feel like they have to pretend to be it, but it's, it's a defensive thing. And it's the same thing with, with school shooters, right? It's a, it's a, it's a, it's, I've been fucking getting in trouble for the same thing. When I was in college, everybody in my class was saying like, I could, I, well, I'm not a school shooter. I'm not a school shooter. I'm not a school shooter. I could never understand school shootings. And I'm like, Max, it's your turn. And I'm like, well, I can't understand it actually. Right, I've so never shot up a school. I've never sure. abused a child. I've never been accused of doing either or even planning to do either. But I can empathize with, with people doing terrible things. It, and it's interesting to me to talk about, especially as a way to prevent those things from happening. So I think you, I think you're protecting yourself by making these declarations. And yes, it, it, it pushes my buttons. Yeah. It makes you really angry because it does. Yeah. Cause I think it's the root of all evil. Oh no. Look, this, here's what I think. I think people have a normal filter for certain places that they're not willing to go and that we actually need mentally yes yes we have like a mental shield that we, so if you, that's like you're a barrier, afraid if you like watch cuties hey, just, you're afraid if you watch cuties max, max let me talk okay i let you okay. talk just let me talk yeah, yeah go ahead go ahead so we have like a defense mechanism for certain ideas that we don't want to go down and you don't have that and from my perspective like that's fucked up that you don't have that Okay, so the thing that you think is wrong with me, to put it succinctly, is not that you think I happen to be a potential mass shooter who happens to be a potential pedophile groomer who happens to be a potential rapist or whatever, whatever else people are saying about me. You think that the sing you think this is all a singular thing, which is I am willing to explore dark ideas and feelings that a normal person would have a safety net preventing them from exploring. Yes, and not only, but it's not only that you're willing to do that, but you seem angry at everybody else for not in, not wanting that. Well, that's inarguable. That's that's definitely true. Did they just nail the definition of a non-playable character? I think that's what just happened. On one side of that definition, People are cluttered with mental roadblocks, preventing them from understanding themselves and those around them. While on the other side, we're free. I'm starting to like you, Mr. Girl. I think you're a real person. The subject of school shootings came up years ago when I met the Honey Badgers at the first International Conference on Men's Issues. Man, the good old days. I said something like, yeah, there were times I wanted to do that. Let's just say they didn't understand. For normal people, any statement like that is an opportunity to virtue signal, with a Tucker Carlsonian look of confusion, if nothing else. This needs to be studied. How do we train the masses to remove and prevent the erection of these roadblocks? I'm sure it can't be done. Failure to accept social norms unquestioningly is too strongly correlated with IQ. Oh, and before I forget, yes, this inability to question oneself on this level is a good-ass candidate for the root of all evil. Bonds. I'm saying repression is bad, and you're pro repression. How? Tell me how thinking well, so about I, I agree. bad makes me more so likely no, to do it. The reason I respond in that way is because I agree with you that if people have these demons that they're fighting, they should be in. No, 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 no. See, do you see what you did there? Though you're saying like, oh yeah. So there's so now you've created two groups of people, Max. There's demon havers and non-demon havers. And uh, yeah, well, guys, guess yeah, which I one I'm in. That. Guess which one I'm in. So, I okay, that. so you have I, demons. I know Max. you think that every so you time have, you somebody have demons, like, and I don't. points out that there's that there's like. Pre some people have problems and some people don't that that's a virtue signal it's but not it no it's not i don't think it's virtue signaling that's not what it is it's um it's a self-protected virtue signaling is to get praise and clout you say like i gave a homeless black man my frappuccino today on my way to work haha <laughs> and then people are like oh great that's virtue signaling this is fear this is fear of the mob. And so I'm just going to point out every time you work it in that you're like, yeah, yeah. So that, so you have demons and I don't, is that what you were trying to say? No, that's not what I'm trying to fucking say. I'm saying that this applies to everybody. I think that trying not to think about <clears throat> bad thoughts and feelings you have, make them more powerful and more likely to explode out of you when you least expect it. And I think everyone has some acquaintance or family member 
or coworker or somebody who seemingly inexplicably just snapped and did something that made no sense at all. And then they watched everyone around them declare, well, I didn't, I would never kill my family. I don't know why that person did that. And it's this constant, and this is why I'm saying it's the root of all evil, because it's this constant like scramble to make yourself seem normal and make other people seem weird. And everybody's just trying to stay on top. So the point of my channel is I'm like, not going to do that. Fucking nailed it. Yes. There is no distinction to be made between demon havers and non-demon havers. You know how much of a better place the world would be if we could ax that kind of thinking? That black and white thinking is why we have a fascist sex offender registry. It's the idea that there exists a finite number of demon havers, and all we have to do is keep them on a tight leash, and the rest of us will be safe. This is why people seriously think that more background checks will do a goddamn thing about the gun violence epidemic. Just keep the guns out of the hands of the criminals. Then they can't hurt the non-criminals. Yeah, because no one without a felony would ever commit a felony. And surely it's only people who've been in psych wards who've ever had emotional health troubles. And don't forget, you need a good guy with a gun to stop a bad guy with a gun. Dipshit. There are no good or bad guys. There are people with good and bad days. Let me amend that. There are bad guys with guns. You become a bad guy once you're convinced that you're the good guy. But honestly, I don't like to approach this shit from like a consequentialist viewpoint. Like for me, it's just a hard stop. It's, it's Why? A hard stop for no reason. Because and it's that to wrong. ask you the why you is that to it's ask wrong. You, it is wrong to think about certain things. It, yes, yes. Do, I, it's are wrong you religious? To, like, if you fantasize about fucking a kid, that is wrong. Are you religious? I am, but I'm only recently religious. Like that's I don't have a religious upbringing, and I was an atheist for the vast majority of my life. And so I do you mean wrong? Thing. Do you mean wrong? And like, do you think it's wrong to fantasize about? Is it wrong for me to play Mortal Kombat and think about like punching women's heads out, no, out of their body? That's not the same thing. Is it okay? So it's not wrong for me to do that. To play the video game? No, that's not wrong. Is it wrong for me to think about killing my girlfriend when I'm mad at her? Yes. Why? Because it just is. I, what do you? What's your definition of wrong? So. <laughs> so it's immoral i mean that's like a synonym right but uh, do you want yeah. me to go into my oh, i just i want to understand how it is wrong yada yada he doesn't come up with anything good he is incapable of critical thinking whether born or raised that way sorry on behalf of the free thinking community this conversation has nowhere to go i can't help in any direct way anyone with that kind of it's just wrong thinking Right, but only one of us has a history of hitting women, Max. That's true. So, so we can agree to disagree on that. You think I? You think I hit my ex because I was too in touch with my feelings? I. I don't think that's true. I don't think people are are physically abusive because they are they think and express their emotions too much. I think I was pretty clearly out of touch with my feelings and then i would snap out of nowhere or she would snap out i mean we were both complete we both hit each other we we're both completely out of touch with our feelings we had no idea how to talk about any of it and we we we, we tussled but i the more i think and talk about my feelings the more um the more laid back i am even though i'm expressing more anger i would say it it controls me less precisely you want the surest way to physical violence in a relationship? Go with the silent treatment. Go ahead and try it. Ideas will express themselves, eventually non-verbally if necessary. The same thing happens on larger scales. This is how you get everything from Antifa to Hamas. Hurt people will be hurt one way or another. The estimates I've seen on uh, primary pedophilic attraction is like two to three percent of all men so how many people are in the live stream right now uh it's like 200 give or take okay so that's probably six pedophiles watching right now six people who are primarily attracted to prepubescent children 
and who have little to no interest in adults. I mean, yeah, that's fucked up. I know, but what do you want to so, like? So okay, so now what do you want to do about it? What I want to do is end the irrational sex negativity. What is the fucking worst that could happen? Show me that if the boogeyman gets a quality lap dance from a cutie, that her brain is going to liquefy and fall out her nose. I think if you could convince me of the drain out the nose theory, my stance on the issue would change drastically. I delete half my videos. Even Bill Maher was based on this, as evidenced in one of my old videos. If I remember, he compared the hypothetical experiences of being bullied and beaten up as a kid versus being, quote, gently masturbated by an adult you like. To him and me, there's no comparison as to which is infinitely worse. So, side point that the worst bullying people experience in their lives is from children. The same children that the general consensus finds so innocent. We're not born innocent and corrupted. Consider that it's the opposite. The worst thing about leaving your son alone with a lonely priest isn't that there might be human contact. It's that you, the parent, forced him to be somewhere against his will. There is a strong pedo paranoia right now. And I don't really understand it because um, I think child welfare is probably at its best that it's ever been in history. The age of consent seems like most people agree on it. I don't hear liberals and conservatives arguing about it. I hear a lot of um, paranoia that liberals are trying to lower it, but I've never heard anybody mention it. It seems like this is something. Yeah, the, let's one of the, some Vosh streams. Sorry, keep going. Well, so Va, Vosh compared um, child labor to. Uh, he had some Discord leak about how in, under socialism, the age of consent will be lower because the power balance will be equaled or whatever. But I don't want to I don't want to talk oh, okay. about Vosh at all. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I, I, I don't think that the age of consent should be lower than it is. I think that. Uh, yeah, I think it's a it's about right. We've confirmed Mr. Girl doesn't watch my videos. Maybe I just need to say it again. The age of consent should be lowered. Even if you're worried about pedophiles, 12 would be a safe age that would, quote, protect the 11-year-old cuties while not bringing the iron hammer of state violence down upon those who went out with the already developed and already sexually active 13-year-olds. 12 is thus the moderate position on the issue. The progressive position is abolishing the AOC altogether. The ultra-Puritan, ultra-conservative, lock them up and throw away the key, Sharia law eat your heart out position is what we have now, effectively 18 in every U.S. state, unless you're within a small age difference. There's no more need to praise Mr. Girl for his bravery. You just heard him come out as pro-prison establishment and pro-status quo. Plus one to Vosh, though, for that comment. But also, of course, negative one to Vosh for the same comment. Fuck your assessment of power dynamics. No one is more powerful than children in our society, not even women, not even billionaires. If you ever come across someone under the age of 18, you should react no differently than if you came across a Hagunenon of Vesicitus III, the guide advises that you run away terribly fast. I think there's something weird going on. I think people are obsessed with this topic and I don't, I don't really understand why. I think people just hate pedophiles and I don't have a problem with that. Like, do they, do they take it too far in certain examples you could give? Probably, but generally speaking, it's probably a healthy hatred. I think, do you think, let me ask you this. Do you think that there's more pedophiles now than there used to be? Or do you think that it's always been one to 3% of men? If that's okay. Really I have right. a couple, I have a multifaceted response to what you just said. One, a healthy hatred. I don't think hatred is, I think it's something you can accept about yourself. I don't know if it's something we want to foster. I think that we can stop people from committing crimes with like law enforcement. I don't think we need to hate them as well. Two, um, I don't think that, uh, I cannot remember what I was going to say. Oh, 
you're saying it's unhealthy to think about killing your wife, but it's healthy to think about cutting a pedophile's balls off and sticking them in their mouth. That's weird. I, to didn't, me. I, I, I didn't say that. I did not. But that's say what's that. happening. People talk and fantasize about throwing pedophiles into wood chippers constantly. Like that. Like talking about killing pedophiles is like uh, a pastime. And so, if you think it's unhealthy or immoral to think about killing people, I feel like there's some conflict with the you being okay with the pedophile hatred. Good on Mr. Girl for catching the contradiction with something the host had said earlier. But isn't this interesting? How is this not a giant red flag that the way you think about the world is just plain wrong? He didn't even qualify that he hates those who take action as opposed to those who just fantasize. These are the Nazis I'm up against. People who think hating people for being who they are is justified. Burn in hell, you goose-stepping pig. Do you think that there's that there's always been one to three percent of oh. the male population that's yeah? So how do you define pedophile? Somebody who basically fantasizes about fuck. Right? I think the, so the, the strict way I would define it is if I phallometrically tested you with images of children and you failed the test. Okay, you'd be so a check pedophile. out this study in 1991. Hall did a study where she did that, and. Um, 90% of men, I think it was maybe 85%, uh, get an erection if you show them child porn. I'll have to check that out. Cause that, check it out. That's, I know you don't like that. That's, that's great. And you're not, you're one of the 15%. What a fucking surprise. I know. <laughs> well, but, I, that's no, I know you're me, just man. something you can't relate to and no, you're I, normal. I, I got, I'm gonna, I'm you gonna just have look a into that a little bit more because I don't, I'm, I find that hard to believe. And I want to just compare that to other I'm studies. I'm sure you find it very hard. I know they've done more than one believe. study on this. Okay. They so, have. So, so if that from my understanding, my understanding is phallometric data. You'd have to my, ask my, yourself. Well, well maybe they didn't show them good enough fucking porn in the other one. Yeah. My understanding from phallometric data is that men are capable of being aroused by children, adults, dogs cats whatever i think that all kinds of things can turn you on if something's supposed to turn you on or uh, it's, uh, seductive in some way i think it can turn you on even if it's something you would not normally be turned on by it's okay bro it's okay so anyway in the late 1800s the age of consent in delaware was seven And so I would assume almost no one would be considered a pedophile in those days. It's like, I want to marry your daughter and you basically get your dowry and then you're good. So there's a, in, the, in defining what pedophilia is, you have to take norms into account. No, no, you don't. Pedophilia is attraction to the prepubescent. Society's reaction is irrelevant to that definition. Are we witnessing a cultural relativism argument? It's okay to hate pedophiles because everyone else does now? Even though we know how recently this wasn't the case? Reminder that the AOC was either 10 or 12 in every non-Delaware state and 10 in Britain until first wave feminism's Josephine Butler campaigned against child prostitution in 75 and 85 and the changes she brought about changed ultimately the entire world bringing about the modern witch hunt. These were the same people who started the temperance movement. This was the very same act that criminalized homosexuality. Also, a reminder that virtually 100% of humans are attracted to teenagers. Pedophiles may be the only people who aren't. This includes gays, this includes women. I don't want to do armchair psychology here, but one thing people say is that children who are abused as a coping mechanism, they normalize it, right? They, they tell themselves that it's okay because that's how they like cope with the guilt or whatever. And so when, when I hear you say certain things like kids are horny, I feel, I wonder if that's where that's coming from. Is like, is that. Bro, you, were you ever a kid? You don't think 14 year old boys well, are okay, horny? No, but I'm not talking about 14 year old boys. What are you talking boys. about? Who are you talking about? Well, so you, for example, said that when you were 10 years old, you were like having like cyber sex in internet chat rooms. Is that true? 
with adults. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I assume they were adults. I don't fucking right. know. Right. So, so that to me would suggest some kind of abuse took place because 10 year old boys shouldn't even really know what, like, shouldn't even really be able to conceptualize having cyber sex, you know? Uh, I don't think that's true. Oh boy, there's a way of coping with the guilt. Counterpoint. Conservatives like you created that guilt. It is normal, and you try to demonize it. What that guilt you created does is convince normal healthy people who had normal healthy relationships with adults that they were abused when they weren't. Did all antis just develop especially late? I was masturbating at 8. If the internet had existed, I would have been all over it. I have a journal somewhere that includes my thoughts at the time. Consider the following. The more years pass between the start of sexual fantasies and the loss of virginity, the more damage is done to that person. That's sexual repression. Conservatives are impeding normal, healthy growth. I think it's child abuse to masturbate in a bed with a child. Whether they're asleep, awake, dead, uh, in a coma, whatever, you shouldn't masturbate in the same bed as your sibling. Um, now, I, I, that may be a privileged thing to say if you're poor and you have to sleep in the same bed every night. I think that poverty does force people to masturbate in weird places. But I think that aside, you should not masturbate with your little sister in bed with you. You're joking aside. Speaking of things that were normal before the 20th century, this. Back in my day, the whole family lived in one room. The parents had sex while the kids were in the room. I'm sure the parents had sex while the kids were in the bed. Please stop criminalizing things that used to be normal just because you want to create an artificial bubble of modern adolescence. The bigger your artificial bubble, the bigger your prison system. That's the inevitable consequence of the authoritarian attempt to change everyday human behavior by force. Mr. Girl goes on to say more garbage along this line that is countered by my immediately preceding sentence, so I'll spare you. I do think that everyone can understand and empathize with 99% of what other humans do. And a declaration of non-empathy, I don't think is a good thing. And I think it is a self-protective thing that causes a lot of problems. I don't think so we it, should empathize, empathize with pedophiles. I don't just, I don't see. And I think, I think it is imperative. There has to be some things that are just pedophiles. wrong that you just what, don't tolerate or accept. What I don't think that empathy means you accept something. I don't think I, empathy well, means it, you tolerate it is, something it is. either. It's, it's like it's like a form of affirmation when you say, "Yeah, I could see how you'd feel that way." I don't think that's affirmation. I, how can you help someone if you can't understand them? And that summarizes the whole interview thus far. That's where the it thing is, thrives. is that pedophiles are bad people. That's the th like I I don't I don't buy into this whole just like it's an orientation you can't help it. Uh, what do you mean by bad people? What? What do you mean by bad people? Like bad people, right? So How, I like, know I don't I don't know what you mean. <laughs> like criminals, like dangerous, like just bad people, people that should be shunned and 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 uh, reviled. I don't think that's very thoughtful. And I think that this problem is complex and requires a thoughtful approach. There it is. Even if our host is talking only about the 2-3% to 3 actual pedophiles, he's saying those people are wrong for who they are. He's saying they don't have the right to exist. Not in society, at least. That's called being a Nazi. I have no nicer way to say it. There are people who can just squeeze themselves like a vice and uh, prevent themselves from la uh, acting out. But I generally, I don't think it's a good idea. Uh, as a personal trainer, this is something I de dealt with a lot and still deal with sometimes, where clients are addicted to food. Sure. And the food addiction is really tricky because you have to eat food. Mm -hmm. You can't just not be around it. And so the person, like di different clients, I have to come up with different approaches for them, but I have to treat them basically like they're a drug addict. And, and, like, and you can't do the vice thing you have to come up with a way to integrate it into their diet and so like there's one guy he was like i can't stop eating these cookies i'm going to eat three cookies a day and i so i can't diet and i was like well let's make a diet then that you get 900 calories from these three cookies a day and then we'll build the rest 
Like you're gonna be eating chicken and broccoli almost for the rest of the day. Okay, that's it. I'm done with Mr. Girl. You're a personal trainer and you're telling people to eat chicken. Do you know your arteries constrict within a minute of eating animal protein? Do you know what eating rotting flesh does to the viscosity of your blood? Do you know where autoimmune diseases and inflammatory reactions come from? It's foreign protein. Or maybe you just think people with inflamed joints and poor circulation make better athletes. You're giving people atherosclerosis, kidney disease, and cancer in the coming years as well. I recommend you start by watching the Game Changers, then move on to every NutritionFacts.org video and Dr. McDougall lecture you can watch. I give you credit for not believing in thought crimes, but you still seem to think acting on pedophilia is harmful. Whereas I think Americans murdering 9 billion chickens a year is harmful. Different priorities, I guess. I think maybe where the big disconnect we have, the reason we look at this differently is just the, the idea of like what makes people a pedophile? Is it a choice? Do they have any control over this? And I tend to say that, yes, it's a choice. And you obviously don't see it as a choice. No, I think it's a sexual orientation. Just choose to be a pedophile, bro. What the fuck? Why am I still watching this video? This host still thinks people choose what they find attractive. How do you live through the first two decades of the 21st century and come out still having that view? Having not been buried under the obvious counter arguments. The ones that are so obvious I won't repeat them. Uh, all right, this is the last thing I wanted to look at. And this is a video that's been going around and I wasn't sure if we were gonna get to this, but when you when you told your story about how you accidentally hit on a high school girl, it yeah. made me, I don't know if you've seen this, but this is like two minutes. I haven't. Okay, let's watch this and then I just wanna hear your thoughts on it. Tryouts were. Hey, how are you? Um, hey. Oh yeah, you can take that. Mm -hmm. How you doing? Oh, I didn't mean you could sit there. I thought you said I could take this. What did you mean I could take? You could take the chair. Oh, I was asking if this seat was taken. Oh, no. May I? Um, I don't know. What are you doing? Um, I'm doing all right. Good. That's good. Yeah. That's, that's better than the contrary. Mm-hmm. Or hold on, I'm gonna pause for a sec. How how old is this girl, do you think? Uh 15, 16, I think. I think she looks a little older, but for the way she's acting, it makes me think she is like 15, 16. It it's hard to tell, but I would say even younger than that. I would say like this girl's probably twelve or thirteen. Really? Yeah. But it, it's I hard. Don't know. It's hard to tell. You what? can't see how big she is, but like her look like her hand side her her hand seems like pretty big for a twelve or thirteen. She has a lot of mixed cues. I just want to say, uh I already have a lot to say about this. Okay, let, let's say, let's let the rest yeah. of the video play and then I want to hear I'm what sure. you have to say. Awesome. What's your name? Um Alyssa. Alyssa and Tad. <laughs> Thank you. I see your hesitancy. Yeah. I just, I just, I couldn't help but notice you were the only one hanging out over here. My intentions were to, were to come hang out over here by the pool. I don't see anybody else over here. Or yeah. Like, come hang out with you. Um, I'm currently, uh, on a, on a live talking with some people. Right, I got you. I, got you. Yeah. I won't interrupt. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. So the in that we're getting a, a long range in the chat. A lot of people saying 15, a lot of people saying 13, 14, some people saying 12. It is hard to tell, so I don't I don't know what the answer is obviously. Yeah. But all right, what do you what do you think about that? Um I think it's a very scary thing when adults start wanting to have sex with you. And I don't think that we 
really prepare uh, middle school and high schoolers with uh, a way to, I think that it's kind of people, some people just pick up like, oh, I know what's happening and like, nice try, buddy. Or like, like I used to have a client who looked much older than she was. I started training her when she was 11. Uh, she looked like she was, okay, here's the story. She was 11 and she was almost my height. And uh, a guy came up to us at the gym and said, um, hey, so uh, you, go to, you go to college here? And I was like, she's in fifth grade. And he was like, oh, cool, 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 cool. Well, you know, uh, <laughs> I was just going over here and then just like awkwardly excused himself. And I, I think that like there's two kinds of like kids getting hit on. One is that they know you're a kid and they're hitting on you because you're a kid and they're trying to like abuse you. And then another is they think you're older. And I think that the second one is kind of inevitably likely going to happen to a lot of people. And she doesn't seem like she has been taught how to handle this situation at all. And she seems completely terrified as a result. Oh, oh, I remember this video well. I was enraged. When I get mad, I tend to make YouTube videos that tell everyone in the world why they're wrong and fucked up. This one pushed me beyond that. I was on a whole new level of pissed off. I'll start by saying I read the young woman was actually 18. Whether or not Reddit gave me fake news, I don't know. I refuse to enrage myself further by looking deeper into this. Regardless of her age, she's what you would call hot. This is an extremely attractive young woman. If you disagree, you're wrong. But anyway, the whole of the internet was defending this young, beautiful, and therefore powerful woman because she went through a life-altering trauma feeling awkward for a minute. On the other hand, the whole of the internet was shaming this, and I'm making the in no way certain assumption that this wasn't staged, shaming this powerless, helpless man who just went through a brutal rejection. That's what's wrong with our society. Everything you know is wrong. She had all the power. More so if she actually was underage. And what happens as a result of people seeing this interaction? The fucking Matthew effect. As Woody Guthrie used to sing, the rich keep getting richer and the poor folks a keep on getting poor. The result is she gets more powerful. She gets more sympathy and more white knights. He gets demoted from awkward low-ranking male to pedophile. Lower than leper. Maybe she would know how to talk to men had we not forced her into this artificial adolescence bubble. But Mr. Girl thinks she should have some training in how to handle these situations. He thinks this without seeing the contradiction. Yeah. So here's another thing I think about this. Um, women who do want to have sex also sometimes act like this. So... Here we um, go. Here we go. <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay, here's another story at the gym. I came up to this girl and I was like, hey, can I have your phone number? We had talked maybe like once before. I was like, can I have your phone number? And she was like, no. And I was like, okay. And she was like, wait, really? And I was like, yes. And she was like, you want my phone number? And I was like, yes. And she was like, why? And I was like, so I can text you? And she was like, okay, here. And I was like, okay, great. And then she gave me her number. And like, it's not, that's not a surprising interaction to me. It's like, I know that your initial answer is going to be like, no, fuck off before you've even thought about what's happening. And then as like a defense thing. And I think that if women were more assertive, even when they do or they don't want to have sex, the context for this interaction would be more clear. So if every time a woman was like, no, I don't know if you should sit next to me. If that actually meant that they were scared and didn't want to talk to you, then when they did that, you'd be like, oh, okay, this person obviously doesn't want to talk to me. But also sometimes people just are jittery and weird and awkward. I think because they lack the aforementioned training or guidance and how to act in these situations. I don't think people are very good at saying no or yes, basically is what I'm saying. Okay, thank you. A spoonful of base to calm me down. Women don't know how to talk to men. If you've ever had them hit on you, you know this. Sometimes you have to creep on women. 
Yeah, I mean, you, you got to take a shot somehow. That's the thing is that there's no way if you get rejected, you're a creep. And if you don't get rejected, then you're like suave. Like there's no real yeah, way. That's to, all it really comes down to, right? You you have if, to cross a line. Not the woman wants it. Yeah. You, yeah. You have to determine whether where the line is. Then you have to cross it the teeniest bit and then see what happens. And then if she says like, oh, actually, the line is like back over here in my vagina. So you could go all the way up there. And then you're like, oh, OK, I guess I didn't cross the line. Great. And if she says, actually, you've already crossed the line. I don't want you to sit at this table with me. Then you have to be like, hey, I didn't want to sit at the table anyway. It's cool. Yeah, it's true. It's it's all just about incrementing your, incremental, your way towards the vagina. I guess. Incremental creepiness. Yeah. This dude's got even more game than ETP 445. He gets it. That's a great summary of how to talk to women. There's no avoiding being creepy. How creepy you are is dependent entirely on how attractive your face is or isn't. If she's going to think you're creepy for hitting on her, then guess what? She already thought you were creepy for not hitting on her. So fuck it. Subscribe to my channel for more pickup advice. So then they wrap it up. In conclusion, Mr. Girl is interesting and worth talking to you. Open invitation extended if he wants to have a talk with me. I'd be curious to see how he'd react to pushback from the more progressive side. If that's a no, then ultimately he still leaves me, of course, disappointed. Perhaps there's hope he just hasn't been properly exposed to all the best sex-positive arguments. But this host, this I-hypocrite person, no, he's not someone worth talking to or watching.